Lee, on the 27th of April, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors held an extraordinary executive council meeting in Abiyokuta, Diogon State Capital. This meeting was predicated on the burning issues of welfare of health workers and doctors and the alarming flight of doctors over poor remuneration. After the meeting, a communique was released giving the federal government two weeks to implement the agreement concerning their demands. It's been over a week and nothing has been heard. The question is what happens after two weeks? What exactly are the demands of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors? And can the federal government meet these demands? To find answers to these questions, we will be joined by the President, Association of Resident Doctors, FMC Umahia. My name is Esther Omelu, and you are welcome to a special interactive session. Dr. Chigozi Uzrumba, it's a pleasure to have you on this special interactive session. Thank you, Esther. So, uh, precisely on the 27th, like I said, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors held an extraordinary executive council meeting and resolution from that meeting that was made public issued the federal government two weeks to implement the agreements of the demands. Uh, let me ask you real quick, what exactly are the demands of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors categorically? What are the demands? Thank you so much for your questions, Esther. On the 27th of April this year, there was an extraordinary National Executive Council meeting of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital. That meeting was called to review the state of affairs in the health sector in Nigeria, particularly as it affects the discharge of health services by the resident doctors and the, the welfare situation of the resident doctors in Nigeria. From the communique that was issued, there were observations that were made, top of which was the, the poor state of the Nigerian health sector. Um, we also observed the obnoxious bill by Honorable Ganiu Johnson of Lagos State trying to um, keep doctors in Nigeria, young doctors in Nigeria, medical graduates doing house job for five years. So there were the observations that the agreement on the COMMES, that is the consolidated medical salary scheme which was due for review have not been reviewed since the last time that it was passed there was the observation that the medical residency training fund for this year has not been paid even though um, our members have gone for the update courses for the examinations and for other trainings for which that fund was created in the first place. There was also the observation that um, the domestication of the Medical Residency Training Act in the States have not been done and that the hazard allowance which the federal government has started paying has not been domesticated across all the states in this country. There was the observation that the 2014-2015-2016 salary areas of Nigerian doctors were yet to be paid, okay? So this, with areas of salaries being owed by some state governments, of which Abia State is one of them, these observations were all made by the NEC. And following that, there were some resolutions and the ultimatum issued from that communique. So in that, um, Communique, we stated that one, that the commerce should be reviewed immediately. We stated that the obnoxious bill by the Honorable Daniel Johnson should be withdrawn immediately. We stated that the 2023 medical residency training fund should be paid without further delay. We stated that states should domesticate the medical residency training. Act and that the hazard allowance 
should be paid by the states and that everywhere that residency training is being done in Nigeria among private institutions should be paying the reviewed comments to the resident doctors. So uh, these were the demands that we made. And uh, we gave the federal government two weeks to meet these demands. We know that if the federal government is committed to the health of Nigerians, to the welfare of the Nigerian doctors, if the federal government is uncomfortable with the spate of brain drain that we have currently in this country, two weeks is enough time to corner and to see to the issues. So I've listened to you talk about the demands and that is quite a lot of demands. Um, do you think that the federal government would be able to meet all, all of these demands in two weeks? I mean, if they were able to, we wouldn't have, this is not the first time we're having all of these demands. But let me ask you, do you think that genuinely the federal government would meet up with the two weeks ultimatum that has been issued by the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, considering the demands that this organization has made? Um, thank you for your question, Esther. If I may take the question, um, the issues one at a time, so you see how practicable it is. Um, the issue of review of commerce is a policy issue. Um, this ultimatum is not the first step concerning the commerce review. We have been engaging the government on the need to review the commerce long before now. Um, you may know that the commerce was first um, passed in 2009, and in that collective bargaining agreement, it was agreed that it will be reviewed every five years. In 2014, that was when the payment of commerce started. And this is 2023. 2014 to 2023 is about eight years or more. You know, so we are just letting the government know that it's high time we do this review. So in two weeks, you can start a policy change, okay? Now, um, withdrawal of a bill by Honorable Ganiu Johnson. How long does it take to withdraw a bill? Okay. So concerning the 2023 MRTF, all the paperwork has been concluded. It's just for government to pay. So how long does it take to give the go-ahead to pay? Concerning domestication of MRTF in the states, how long would it take the Federal Minister of Health maybe through the Nigerian Governors Forum, to put the pressure on the state governments to domesticate the act. So the areas of salaries that are owed across the country in different states, even though the federal government would not pay directly, how long will it take to call these state governors to bear on them to pay? Now, we are not unreasonable people. These demands are things we know that the government can do. Now, what has the government done so far to show that we have their commitment and they are ready to do what it takes to meet the demands? So these are the germane issues here. You know, we are not obstinate. We are very reasonable people as a professional body. So we want to see the government taking responsibility. That is what this is about. And so far, regrettably, we have not seen that sense of responsibility concerning this issue. And let me cut you a bit um, with you saying you have not seen um, that sense of responsibility. But a couple of months, months ago, we just had the federal election and then state election for um, the, at the presidential level and at the state level. Um, you are given the federal government two weeks. And by May 29, we'll have inauguration of the president-elect. I mean, that would be uh, a transition into, would have another president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I would ask you, uh, would you don't you think maybe the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors would uh, be considerate enough and maybe wait till after May 29, after the inauguration, and then table these issues, um, hopefully now that we'll be having a new um, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? 
Okay, so we both know that government is a continuum. That's right. Um, these issues we are talking about are issues bearing on the health of Nigerians. Doctors are living, okay? And they are living because of poor remuneration. They are not waiting for the new government to come before they leave. All right, so the, the bill does not necessarily need a change in administration before it can be withdrawn. So the logic of having to wait for a new government to come in does not really follow. Because it does not mean that when the new government comes, it's going to be a different... No, you, you, you know why I say this? I say this because um, everyone has his or her own manner of approach to issues. And there are different ways that people in position would decide at this point in time would, would have um, new lawmakers. I mean, 70% of the lawmakers who we have in the House are just new, um, would be their first time. And, and that is why I'm asking this question. I mean, you would have a different approach to issues, perhaps. We believe that health is um, so important to be left to the moods of um, different individuals. And government does not run on moods of individuals. Um, certain things are sacred. Government exists for the well-being and security of our citizens. So right now, we have a government. And that is why NAD is engaging the government. So, and we know that this government has all it takes, has all the authority, all the power to meet the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. Correct if me. if Correct if me an issue comes wrong. up, let's say if an emergency comes up, whatever the emergency is, this present government is not going to say we'll hand over in an issue of weeks. So we'll wait until the new government comes, that's not going to happen. They will respond immediately. So we feel and we know that the issue of Nigerians is one of such priorities that the government should be willing and able to cater to at every point in time. So there's really no need waiting. The issues themselves are not waiting. The health of Nigerians is not waiting. Okay, so NAD is being responsible NAD is living up to its mandate to protect the health of Nigerians, to see to the welfare of our members. So we believe and we know that government is a continuum. It's not like there is a lacuna that will be filled after May 29. No, that's not the case. Every organ of government is still working. So that's why we are engaging now. Dr. Chigose, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, okay. part of the demands, I want us to look at the demands of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, and I think one of them is about 200% uh, increase. Yes. Um, considering the economic situation at this point in time, so let's be realistic. Assuming uh, uh, every uh, association, assuming different sectors, I'm talking about the education sector, I'm talking about security, if they should come up with such a demand, do you think that the federal government would be able to put up with all of those demands. Once again, I thank you, Esther, for this all-important question. Um, maybe I should give a background so that um, these issues will be better appreciated. The 200% increase on commerce that NAD is demanding for is not bogus. Mm. We didn't wake up to throw a figure at the government. No, that's not what happened. Now, um, we looked at the commerce all right the commerce document itself when it was passed in 2009 we looked at the the values and we looked at the state of the economy then we checked about the value of the naira to the dollar we checked about the price of fuel we checked about the general state of the economy then what we tried to do was to mathematically bring a value that will be consistent with what commerce has always been. In other words, we are given a figure which we have calculated to be able to be at par with commerce 
when it was originally passed in 2009. Bearing in mind the, the factors of the economy that drive the value of our Naira. So, mind you, the review of the comments is aimed at giving doctors a remuneration that will keep them in Nigeria. So, there is no need saying you're reviewing comments and then you come up with a figure and you don't solve any problem. In other words, the doctors look at it and they don't think they can live on this and they still go ahead to seek for greener pastures abroad. NAD is on the side of Nigeria and Nigerians. NAD wants a value that will be able to keep Nigerian doctors working in Nigeria. So the 200% increase in commerce is essentially the value we know will be commensurate with the economic realities of today. And then a doctor will look at it and say, okay, if the government is able to do this much, then as a patriotic Nigeria, I can afford to live on this and serve my people here. The 200% increase in commerce does not still equate to what people get in South Africa, in UK, in Saudi Arabia, in Canada. These are the top countries, Australia included, who are taking Nigerian doctors from Nigeria. Okay, so we are on the side of Nigeria. We are on the side of Nigerians. We want to keep the health sector of Nigeria viable. So all we did was to give a figure, which we believe will be able to get the job done of keeping Nigerian doctors in Nigeria serving Nigerians. Uh, Dr. Chigose, real quick, I, I would love to um, ask you this real quick. The fact that uh, doctors are also calling for the withdrawal of the bill. Now, you and I know that a bill are not just passed, they go through rigorous phases and then would go through public hearing. Um, do you think the calling of withdrawal of the bill is necessary at this point in time, considering the fact that it hasn't even gotten to the point of public hearing? It has to go through public hearing before it's been passed into law. Um, um, thank you. Thank you, Esther, for your question. Um, it has given me an opportunity to speak further on this issue of um, um, debut by Honorable Ganiyo Johnson. Now, the question is, um, something we know is wrong. Why do we want to double down on it? Since that bill was... Um, you know, read for the first and second time on the floor of the house, it has received widespread condemnation from all the stakeholders in the health sector, from the NMA to the MDCAN, which is the Medical and Dental Consultant Association of Nigeria, to NAD, the Nigerian Station of Resident Doctors. Even some good-spirited Nigerians have lent their voice to this issue. And if you follow that discourse uh, on uh, mass media, you, you see um, a lot of condemnation. Even the Minister of Labor on national TV said that he personally does not agree with that view. So why do we, do we, must we spend taxpayers' monies on things that have no value to Nigerians? It's wrong. Withdraw it immediately. Save us the stress of having to come, travel from all over the country, to come to Abuja for a public hearing, keeping uh, uh, revered le legislators seated just to receive further condemnation. There's no need for all of that. The right thing to do is for Honorable Ghani Johnson to withdraw the bill immediately so we can move forward from there. Uh, Dr. Chigose, the federal government is not new to strike. Yeah. Uh, this is not the first time, it's not the second time, and I do not think it would be the last to, okay. be, to be realistic here. So what happens if the demands are not met? Um, will the Nigerian Association pull through or go through with the industrial disharmony? Um, thank you once again. You you have asked a very important question but i'll tell you that the national executive council of the nigerian association of resident doctors is wise um, when the ultimatum was passed on the 29th of april the position of the neck was that at the expiration of the two weeks ultimatum we will reconvene and take further decisions 
So I am a member of the NEC, but I cannot preempt the NEC. So we've given the two weeks ultimatum, and we are urging the government to do the right thing and call NAD for negotiations. Because at the end of the two weeks, NEC will reconvene, and I don't know what the decision of NEC will be at this point. So just before we wrap up, Dr. Chigose, assuming the, the federal government demands that uh, the Nigerian Association take down a bid of the 200% increase, would there be any bit of compromise here? Of course, when you come to, to um, negotiations, you don't come grandstanding. You come with an open mind, yes. Yeah. So NAD has demonstrated over time that we're a very responsible group. We're a professional group, and we know the significance of what we do and our place in the Nigerian society. So if the government calls us, we we'll negotiate with the government, and we will demonstrate once again that we are patriotic Nigerians. So it's up to the government to call us. So in the negotiations and the bargainings, we would do our best to make sure that Nigeria and Nigerians prevail. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, we'll anchor on today's special interactive session. Thank you very much, Dr. Chikozi Ozumba. And Thank you very much, Esther. And this is where we will be drawing the curtain for today's special interactive session. My guest has been the President Association of President Doctors FMC Umahia, Dr. Chigose Ozurumba. My name is Esther Melu.